All right, the other big idea in this section is relative change. And um, sometimes average rate of change doesn't really tell us what we want to know. All right, so if you take this example where we have um, 100 students, right? 100 students, that's a fixed quantity. But if we add 100 students to our class, that's a big change. <laughs> I don't think they would fit, right? So um, that's a big increase. Whereas if you just, if you add 100 students to the whole student body, um, of St. Thomas, then, you know, it's not, that's not a lot. All right. So sometimes we want to know what is the relative rate of change. So we're looking at what is the, 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 the relative change. And we're talking about relative to what it was before. Okay. So the way you calculate relative change is you look at the change in the quantity, but you divide it by its, the initial amount. All right, so in the case of adding 100 students to our class, you know, if we had 28 students in the class to begin with, and uh, we added 100 to that, then our relative rate of change would be 100 over 28. So that's a 357% increase in the number of students. All right. Um, if, you know, if we added 100 students to the student body, if we had started out with 10,000 students at the University of St. Thomas and we added 100 students, then um, the change in the quantity is 100 divided by the initial quantity, which would be, a, you know, the initial student body was 10,000 um, students, and that's just a 1% change, all right? So we har would hardly notice a, a, that sort of a change, uh, where we, we would definitely notice if suddenly 100 people walked into a cl our classroom <laughs> in addition to the people who were already there. All right. So that's the idea of relative change, all right? We're just looking at the change of the quantity compared to or relative to what it was um, initially, okay? Change in the quantity over the initial quantity. All right, now there are no units. There are no units. Um, and oftentimes it's expressed as a, as a percentage. So when you get this, when you get a, a, this value, a lot of times it's a decimal and then you would multiply by a hundred to, to convert it to percent. All right. And it's called, and you probably may, you probably have run into this concept before, but it's often called percent increase or percent decrease. So let's look at this example too. So during the great depression, which I'll move it up a little bit so we can see. Um, during the Great Depression, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell from a peak of 381.17 on September 3rd, 1929, to a low of 41.2 on July 8th, 1932. Okay, so we have a change in the Dow Industrial Average. And um, we're going to compare that to the Great Re Recession, which was from um, 2007 to 2009. In, um, you know, over that interval, the Dow fell from 14,164.53 to a low of 6,469.95. All right, so we want to look at which relative change was larger. All right, so just let's just find the relative change for each, um, each period. So first, let's look at the Great uh, Depression. Great Depression. So we're going to look at the relative change. So it's just going to be the change in the quantity, right? So we want to take the final minus the initial. So um, the final amount on July 8th, um, 1932, was 41.22. And we're going to subtract the initial, which is uh, 300 and, oops, three, <laughs> can't, can't write here, 381.17, okay? And we want to divide by the initial, all right? So the initial quantity was that 381.17, okay? Now I'm just going to put that into my calculator, and what I get is a negative 0 0.8919. Um, all right, now I'm going to also express that as a percentage. So I'm just going to multiply it by 100, which is just moving the decimal two places to the right. So this is a negative 89, I'll just say 0.2 uh, percent, okay? So essentially what we're saying is that the Dow lost 
89.2% of its initial value, right? If we took if we took 89.2% of 381.17 and then subtracted it, we would end up with the 4 um 41.22. All right? So the, the Dow lost 89.2% of its initial value. So now let's look at the great recession. Great recession. Okay, from 2007 to 2009, the um, final was, the final amount was 6,469.95, and we're going to subtract the initial amount, which was uh, 14,164.53. And we're going to divide that by the initial quantity, which was 14,164.53. All right, so I'm going to put that into my calculator, and what do I get? We get um, minus 0 0.5432, which as a percentage is a negative 54 point, I'll round it to 3%. All right, so during the Great Recession, the Dow fell, lost 54%, 54.3% um, of its initial value. Okay, so you can see, even though you know, if you look at just the um, absolute change, you know, going from 381 um, to 41 is a lot less than going from 14,000 to 64,000, right? Or is it not 64, 6,400 <laughs> and 69, right? You can see that the absolute change is actually greater for the um, Great Recession, but because the Dow was already at 14,164 um, at the beginning of the Great Recession, it lost um, less of its initial value. So you can see why the Great, Re Great Depression was a lot more severe because 89%, even <laughs> when it was only at 381.17 to begin with, and it lost 89% of its value, then um, that was a lot more severe. So let's see, to answer the question, which was larger, larger magnitude? So the Great Depression, Great Depression was larger. All right, so that's our first application of the relative, um, of relative rate of change. And you can see that sometimes it's a more accurate, um, allows us to more accurately compare things if we look at the relative rate of change rather than the absolute rate, uh, the absolute change or the, average rate of change.